Over the years, Hollywood has produced so many movies based on real people and serial killers. Some are very accurate and others are more loosely based. This week we are going to talk about five of these movies and who they are based on. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Peyton and we talk about all things true crime. Typically we talk about crimes such as a murder case or kidnapping, but today we are going to be doing something a bit different and talking about movies based on the killers of our nightmares. I am thinking this may be a multi-part series, but we will wait and see. The IMDb pages to all of these movies will be linked in the description box below. Before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications so that you do not miss any future content. The Clove Hitch Killer is the first movie we will be talking about today. This movie came out in 2018 and the killer is played by big name actor Dylan McDermott. He plays this part really well and it is not surprising with his past experience in American Horror Story. The Clove Hitch Killer gets much of its backbone from the serial killer Dennis Rader aka BTK but it is one of those movies that is much more loosely based with just a couple similarities. Actors Charlie Plummer, Madison Beattie, Brenna Sherman, and Samantha Mathis also play an important role in this movie. This one only has a 6.5 on IMDb, but I really enjoyed this one. I believe the storyline was well written and I immediately thought of Dennis Rader before I even read that it was supposed to be loosely based on him. A quick synopsis synopsis of this movie would be the following. A teenage boy scout, Tyler Burnside, played by Charlie Plummer, finds out his loving and wholesome community isn't as nice as it seems. The small Kentucky town is haunted by a serial killer that preys on young women and has killed 10 of them, but has been dormant for years now. The killer is known as Clove Hitch. When young Tyler Burnside finds a collection of disturbing images in his father's belongings, this would be Dylan McDermott's character, he suspects the man that he has loved and who has been a lovely community leader may be responsible for the murders. While this may not have the highest reviews, it still has pretty good reviews but not the highest, I recommend that you check it out if you have not seen it. I love that this movie is based around a star student and churchgoer finding out that his community leader father, who is also a churchgoer, could be someone from all of his nightmares, the guy who has haunted him. This one is a great example of how we never know anyone and mainly links to Raider's killings by the fact that he he was a huge family man who would secretly go out at night, he would stalk people, and then he would murder them and he would go home to his family like nothing was wrong. The next movie we are going to talk about is The Frozen Ground, which came out in 2013. This one may sound familiar to you as the movie is based on serial killer Robert Hansen, who I just covered in my last video. Unlike The Clove Hitch Killer, this one is not loosely based on Hansen's crimes because this one is actually about him and how he is captured. This movie's three main characters are names you are sure to recognize. John Cusack as Robert Hansen, Nicolas Cage as Sergeant Jack Holcomb, and Vanessa Hudgens as the one victim who got away. Cindy Paulson. IMDb rates this one at a 6.4. I think this one deserves a higher score as they follow the timeline of Hansen's actual crimes really well and it is very accurate in its depiction. Vanessa Hudgens does a phenomenal job playing 17 year old victim Cindy Paulson who was the only victim that ever got away from Hansen and survived his crimes. She ended up being the person that led to Hansen 
Hansen being thrown behind bars. The Frozen Ground follows the story of Alaskan State Trooper Sergeant Jack Holcomb when he partners with Cindy Paulson, a young woman who got away from a serial killer. The two would work together to apprehend him for his crimes. If you want to learn more about Robert Hansen's crimes, I will put a link right here to my video that I just did on him. Now we are going to talk about the 2003 film Monster. This one is old enough that I am sure many of you have either seen it or heard of it. This one follows the story of Eileen Warnos and her girlfriend at the time, Tyria Moore, though they named Moore's character in the movie Selby Wall. The reason for the name change of Warnos' girlfriend in the movie is apparently for legal reasons. The movie cannot use someone's actual name if they did not give them permission to use a character after their likeness. And at the time, Tyria Moore did not want to be associated with the film at all. IMDb rates this one at a 7.3, which is a very good score. However, it is not one of my personal favorites. While it is fairly accurate, this one feels too slow to me, but you can't speed up real life events, so it's understandable. However, Eileen Warnos is played by the lovely Charlize Theron, and I'm sorry if I said her name wrong, and she does a phenomenal job. You can't even recognize her under her makeup. She won an Oscar for this role. Selby Wall is then played by the lovely Christina Ricci, who I love, but her character really doesn't match the physical description or the personality of Warnos's real girlfriend. Monster follows the story of of female serial killer Eileen Warnos and her crimes she committed while working as a prostitute. When Warnos meets girlfriend Selby Wall in the movie, she tries to turn her life around by finding legitimate work but fails. This happens a couple times. Instead, she goes back to robbing and murdering men that she meets while working as a prostitute. But the law catches up to her and she is caught and sentenced to death. Warners really is an interesting character and if you're interested in her cases at all, this movie really, it gives some backstory, it gives um, descriptions of the events, um, what's going on behind closed doors. I really think you should check it out. It is slower, like I said, but it's a good one. I, it won an Oscar for a reason. So while I have never understood why Charles Manson is considered a serial killer, since a lot of his killings were done by his followers and he is really a cult leader. The 2004 TV movie Helter Skelter is a pretty good dramatized take on the Manson family murders. The IMDb score comes in at a 6.4 which is a pretty good score for a remake of the 1976 TV series which had wonderful reviews. The cast for this one is so star-studded that it is hard to list them all so we'll just talk about the top build. Jeremy Davies is Charles Manson, Clea Duvall is Linda Caspian, Allison Smith is Patricia Krenwinkel, and Eric Dane plays Tex Watson. Yes, you heard that right. McSteamy is Tex Watson, and he plays it wonderfully. This cast did so great in these roles that they earned themselves a Emmy nomination. The Manson family has always interested me from the way that Manson found his members to how they lived and grew at Spawn Ranch, which was a movie set, and how bizarre the trial was. Helter Skelter encompasses all of this brainwashing, the murders, and the trial. I highly recommend it, especially if you are into cult history or cult stories. Last, we are going to talk about one of my favorite movies, Zodiac. Zodiac came out in 2007 and includes three of my favorite actors, Jake Gyllenhaal as Robert Graysmith, Robert Downey Jr. as Paul Avery, and Mark Ruffalo as Inspector David Toshi. This movie has 
an outstanding score of 7.7 .7 on IMDb, and it is quite obviously about the Zodiac Killer. The Zodiac Killer was a serial killer active in San Francisco from 1968 to 1969. He's really famous for writing the newspapers um, with threats and just telling them about his crimes. While this movie was fantastic, it was quite long, but it still did well at keeping the audience captive, which is what's important. Possibly the most interesting aspect of this movie was the deep dive into Robert Graysmith's obsession on figuring out the serial killer. Graysmith was a cartoonist with The Chronicle. His obsession with the killer is actually very true and even resulted in the end of his marriage with how much it affected his home life. But while they got this right, they also got some things wrong, including Paul Avery, which was Robert Downey Jr.'s character. Avery was, in fact, involved in the case, but not to the extent that they're showing him in the film. There are also several other inconsistencies, such as the ultimate insinuation towards the end of the film that Arthur Lee Allen was the serial killer. This most likely came from Graysmith's book. He would eventually write about the case and that the movie is closely based on. While I don't have time to get into too many of the inconsistencies, I will link a Screen Rant article about them down below if you are interested in getting into it. However, the inconsistencies in this movie shouldn't keep you from watching it. It is a very good movie. It, it keeps you captive. It has a really good score for a reason. It's always been one of my favorites. While there's some inconsistencies, there are many things that they did get right. Not to mention the fact that the actors just, they just did a phenomenal job and it is definitely worth the over two and a half hours to watch. So those are all the movies that we are going to discuss today. I didn't want to make this video too long. We will most likely do another part. There are so many movies to discuss when it comes to true crimes. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's different than what I typically post, but while I'm working on the case of Corey Richens, who is hopefully who I'm going to talk about next time, I wanted to bring you something and I thought maybe doing something different would be would be fun. With that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications if you haven't already so that you don't miss any of my future content. Or if you have any case suggestions or anything that you would like to see me do, you can either comment them down below or send them to the email address right here. Make sure to follow me on social media. I also have links to all my social media down below in the description box, as well as any sources I used, which is mainly IMDB for this, but you will be able to find all that information in the description box below. With that being said, that's really all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video and just remember that the world's most dangerous minds hide in the most unlikely places. Stay safe.